Hey everyone, Jack from the Cardboard Herald here, and I just got done with my first game of Inish. So, let's see what my initial impressions are. Alright, so we got a lot to unpack here. Inish is a big game, not just in pure size of box, but in size of scope of everything going on here. There are lots of intricate systems and rules going on. I'm not going to go into all that because this is a first impressions video. That would be madness. But I do feel like in order to give you a little bit of context for my own impressions of the game, I do need to cover a few basic things. All right, so Inish is a Celtic themed dudes on a map game. That means you're going to have little dudes who are going to march across the board in order to get in fights with other little dudes. <laughs> hopefully taking their territories and securing the victory for yourself. But what makes it a little bit different from other dudes on a map games is that you have no inherent actions available to you. You can't just move across the board because you want to. No, this is one of my favorite aspects of Inish. Everything is limited based off of the action cards that you have available to you. The majority of these are going to be from the same set of cards that are drafted at the beginning of every round. Each of them are unique, but you get to see what you're passing to everyone else and you fear what you're having to hand them. The last thing that's super important to cover in any of these style of games is how you're going to crush your enemies. Yeah, I'm talking about combat. In Inish, if I'm the aggressor and I start some beef, I get to say, hey, you, one of your units die. And then you get to tell me either one of your units die or or you can retreat all your units out of that territory. We just go back and forth, retreat or die, retreat or die, until one of us has no units or one of us has fully retreated. There is an opportunity for a little bit of subtlety. You can play cards that happen to affect combat. There's these like awesome epic cards that have all kinds of different effects that aren't part of the normal drafting rotation. You have to earn them throughout the game. But otherwise, combat is super deterministic, which makes it actually not so mean when someone comes to your territory. Now that we got the basic structure out of the way, we can talk about a few things that freaking impress me about Inish. First off, you have to throw down a freaking gauntlet in order to win this game. What I mean is that in Inish, there are several different victory conditions that if you meet any of them, you can take an action and swoop up this crown saying to the world, hey, if you don't do anything about it, I'm going to win this next round. All three victory conditions are based off of different area control elements. Either you control territories where collectively there are six enemy units present and you still control them. You're the chieftain. You can claim this pretender token saying you're winning at the end of the round. Or you are just spread across the board in six different territories. Doesn't matter if you control them or not. If that happens, you can claim the pretender token. Lastly, if you're just present in territories where there are six different sanctuaries, little villages that populate throughout the board using various mechanics, then you also can claim the pretender token. What's so cool about this is you have to really think about when do I want to make my move because it's all there. It's seems so easy and within your grasp, but you also have to take into account what can I do about it if someone tries to challenge me. It is so damn thematic. It emphasizes the best elements of area control games, that awesome king of the hill aspect that just makes everyone want to topple you down is so fun. The second thing I love about Inish is how it moves the game along, takes things into its own hands and says, I'm going to make sure that someone is winning this game sooner or later. And it does that through a little harp. Well, there are a bunch of little harp tokens that you can play in order to, well, we'll leave that aside. But there are these harp tokens that you earn through a variety of card effects, and they reduce the things that you need to lord over by one in order to claim the pretender token. So as you can tell, just by looking at the components, this is a great looking game. It does all kinds of bizarre things. First off, Look at these tiles. Look at the edges on them. Those are so cool. And the fact that they match up to each other, that's some sort of awesome black magic. Then you have the artwork in this game. And look at this guy. He pretty much looks like the main character of Final Fantasy V if he were being drawn for a fuzzy black light poster. It is crazy. It is sexy. It is psychedelic. This is a bizarre looking game, yet it portrays its fantastic 
Celtic theme beautifully. There are a few things in this game that are worth mentioning that I don't think everybody's going to love, and honestly, I'm not sure how I feel about them either. This is a purely distilled area control game. That means that you're not investing in your clan. You're not developing special powers. You're not going to find some alternate means of victory that's completely different than other players' approaches. You're all pretty much doing the same thing. The other thing that may be kind of off-putting to people are the epic cards, these red cards that are earned for a variety of reasons but they have very specific and very powerful effects that are situational as to when you can play them. And because every single one of them is unique, it makes it hard to anticipate what your opponents can do. All right, let's wrap this up. How did I actually feel about my first game? I thought this was an exquisitely designed distillation of the best elements of these types of games. That said, I am the type of guy who likes a little bit more asymmetric powers. I like being able to invest in my strategy and kind of do my own thing that's a little bit different than everyone else, and Inish doesn't really give the opportunity to do that. I did love that you have to claim the victory. That is like the coolest thing. The, the takeaway from this it is so incredibly awesome. The other thing that I think is so noteworthy about Inish is the art artwork. It is a black light psychotropic experience. I didn't love the board artwork itself. It was kind of drab and boring. I mean, the, the pieces are really cool looking, but the, the board artwork is nothing compared to what's featured on the cards everywhere that just expresses the most vibrant world that I've ever seen in a game where you're having your dudes slaughter other little dudes. I don't know that it's going to usurp uh, Cyclades and Comet, especially Cyclades, I really love it in my heart of hearts. I adore that game, but I think it would be worth owning all three if you're a diehard area control person. So that's it. That's my thoughts on Anish. Tell me what you thought. What did you think of your first game and how did that change over time? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe and we'll have more first impressions, reviews, cardboard cutouts, all the good stuff up on the horizon. 